This video is going to look at the embryo and the placenta and it's just going to cover some particular details that you might encounter in questions. Remember, human reproduction always appears so it's worth your while revising it. However, it is a very long topic so the trick is to break it into sections. Give basic details, no fluff, answer in bullet points. So remember, this is all part of Leaving Cert Biology and the best thing you can do is always use your textbook and complete those past papers. So it all commences with fertilisation. This is when the sperm, the male gamete, fuses with an egg, the female gamete, to form a diploid zygote. And this is all taking place in a fallopian tube or an oviduct. It's important to recognise that the diploid zygote is a single cell. Students often don't recognise that. It's one cell and it contains those 46 chromosomes. What follows is lots of mitosis. The zygote will eventually give rise to this ball of cells, a solid ball of cells known as the morula. And around day three, it's roughly about 16 cells. The morula will go on to form the blastocyst, this hollow ball with an inner cell mass and an outer layer of cells, and it's fluid filled. The blastocyst is this hollow ball structure, it's fluid filled, and it has an outer layer of cells known as the trophoblast. These are individual cells, the trophoblast cells. Inside the blastocyst is a collection of cells known as the inner cell mass, a sort of clump of cells. The trophoblast is involved in the development of the placenta, a very complex process, and the inner cell mass we associate with the development of the embryo. The blastocyst will make contact with the wall of the uterus and once this happens it will burrow its way into the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. This happens because trophoblast cells secrete enzymes, digestive enzymes that break down the endometrium. Implantation is complete around day 12 post-fertilisation but can be earlier. Once implantation has occurred the woman is said to be pregnant. The trophoblast cells will continue to divide and they differentiate and it develops projections growing deep into the uterus lining. In a very complex process, the placenta forms from cells of the trophoblast and those of the uterus. And we reference the syllabus by stating the placenta forms from uterine and embryonic tissue. And so the placenta is considered particularly special because it's formed from the tissues of two separate organisms, the mother and the baby. The placenta has a number of functions and it's very important that you can state or list those functions. So number one, the placenta has an endocrine function. It produces hormones, particularly progesterone and oestrogen being two examples. Number two, it separates the blood of the mother and the fetus. This is very important in case there was incompatibility issues and the mother's immune system attacked the fetus. Gas exchange, nutrient supply and excretion all happens through the placenta. So now you have some idea about how the blastocyst became embedded in the endometrium. It was those trophoblast cells breaking down the lining of the endometrium. So what happens to the inner cell mass? Well, it develops into germ layers. These are basic layers of cells from which all tissues and organs will form. There are three germ layers and I always start from the outside. And remember, the germ layers are the basic layers of cells from which all tissues and organs will form. And there's three of them. Start on the outside, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, ecto, meso, endo. The ectoderm gives rise to the nervous system, the skin and the hair. And the skin was particularly asked a few years ago. The mesoderm, that middle germ layer, it gives rise to the musculoskeletal system, the excretory system and the reproductive system. The endoderm, it gives rise to the lining of the digestive system, the liver and the pancreas, the lining of the reproductive and respiratory systems. So by the eighth week or the end of the eighth week, the embryo is no longer termed embryo, it's a fetus. All the organs have been formed and by the end of week 12, the placenta is fully functioning and if you were to have a scan, you would be able to determine the sex of the fetus. You're often examined on the amnion. The amnion is this protective membrane or protective sac that forms around the embryo and is there to protect it. It's filled with fluid and it generally forms around the time of implantation. Human reproduction is a really complex, long topic. So if I was you now, maybe I would go on and revise the stages of birth and lactation, particularly the hormones. So know as well that you have to know all the previous sections. It's an enormous topic, but it's worth revising because it will be on your paper in some form. Best of luck.